Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I have another video for you guys from Seth the Programmer. This one is talking about Boruto. Now, I think this is a follow-up to a, uh, a video collaboration between Seth the Programmer, Swag Kage, and Clyde where they all got together and basically discussed their opinions as to why people do not like the, uh, the Boruto series. And we already watched that one and we reacted to it, so we're going to watch this one. However, if you joined the uh, live stream that I, uh, that I did a few days ago, as of the recording of this video, by the time you see it, it would have already been uh, a few days or a few weeks. But I'm going to be planning a live stream, which you probably would have... Well, it's actually, no, I'm going to do the live stream after this video airs, so don't worry, you won't miss it. Where I'm going to be watching that video and this one back to back, and we're going to be watching it together, and we're going to discuss it because that video was over an hour and a half long, and I had to limit my thoughts and comments on it because I didn't want to make the video too long. So let's go ahead and watch this video, and since this is a shorter video, I think I'll be able to uh, comment as, as much as I want and to keep this video f from being... Without, without worrying, this video is going to be too long. So just go ahead and watch this. The age of Shinobi shall end is the first thing we learn about this part going in, with Naruto's lone son Boruto still standing as a ninja until the very end. Mm -hmm. Going in, we anticipate a dark end for every dream and accomplishment many of Naruto's fans grew up with, and they were fated to be destroyed. For fans of Naruto to be upset really is understandable, but I think this series has more merit than many people give it credit for. This is, does Boruto deserve as much hate as it gets? <clears throat> but before we get into the video, I'd like to... <laughs> okay, so uh, no, nothing against the uh, sponsor. Let's just go ahead and move on. To Ray Shadow Legends for making this video. There we go. There are many criticisms of Boruto, also known as Naruto Part 3, some of which revolve around power scaling, the treatment of the past characters we grew up with, strange story hmm. decisions, the dumbing down of a franchise, and so much more. I myself was a huge proponent of this mentality that seemed to just write off Boruto as a new generation puke that didn't have a lot to offer and was mainly made to sell merchandise and vulture off of the grandiose name of Naruto, but after really spending mm, time... I mean, there is some, some truth to that. I mean, let's be honest. Because, look... Uh, I think a lot of us probably figured out that one of the reasons why the uh, why the story wanted or why uh, Shueisha kind of wanted to uh, continue the story is because Naruto was a pretty big franchise and it did make them a lot and I mean a lot of money. I mean hell, why do you think they keep pumping out Dragon Ball content? It's because Dragon Ball is very very famous and very very well known and it makes them a lot of money so they kind of Either they, they kind of urge Toriyama to give them something to work with, even if it's not like a completely new story. I mean, he does sort of get involved with some of the video games, if I remember correctly, in order to, you know, help them out. And granted, most of the work is, isn't done by Toriyama, but he does get involved a little bit with the actual content. I think it's the same thing with Boruto, to where, you know, the Naruto series... It does make a ton of money. It is very, very well known, especially internationally, you know, uh, other outside of Japan. And based on that, there's no way Toy was just going to let it die because it's just it's way too popular and makes them way too much money. And personally, I think that that's probably the main reason why they decided they wanted to, to let the series continue, because if I remember correctly, at one point, uh, Kodachi said that his original pitch for you know the series was he wanted to basically go back to the beginning and tell the story of Naruto all over again, except you know maybe with a, a little bit, uh, except maybe with you know some some changes because it would have been like a like a reboot. And while I wouldn't have been a fan of that either, I'm not gonna lie. There is a part of me that is kind of curious to wonder actually what that would have been like, but. Uh, way she said no and just said decide you know what, let's just let's just make it a sequel and decided to uh, to continue the story and that's how we get Borto and while I know some people uh, like like to throw the uh, the criticism well I mean isn't all art meant to make money well yes that's true I mean I don't think that any artist is against making some profit out of their art but if that becomes like the main reason why you decide to make something then Honestly, people can kind of tell because you they can tell that you're not really putting a lot of effort into it because it's obvious that you're just trying to make make a quick buck out of it. But 
And again, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, if I'm being honest, but it, it just, it, it kind of turns people off when you know that your main reason for going into this isn't to tell a good story, it's just to make money. And that's just, I, I think that, I think some people do kind of see that with Borto to where the main, the main, main reason for this story continuing is because Shueisha just wanted to make money as opposed to, uh, you know, wanting Kishimoto to sort of tell the story. I mean, I don't think that Kishimoto even wanted to continue the story. I mean, hell, he even left. He, uh, he, he started working on another series while, while uh, Kodachi was working on the, the, uh, the, the Borso sequel. And it's, uh, you, you know, I, again, to me personally, I feel like the, the Naruto series probably should have ended with chapter 700. I feel like Kishimoto did want the story to end, but people kept kept asking, like, hey, um, could, could you maybe continue? <laughs> could you, cause, cause we kind of need something. But anyway, that's just my thoughts, as always. When analyzing the story, I think I was wrong. And I don't think it was wrong for people to critique me for writing off Borta without much thought. And to be fair, after all, I think the main reason I did write it off is just that. I didn't give it much thought. Now, is the story perfect? No, I no, not even close. Absolutely not, but it does have some things to offer that I deeply appreciate. Even as an old, gen-loving boomer that had blind eyes for only Naruto for many years since the release of this series and even the original movie. We should preface this video with a few things. Many Boruto fans try to de-link Boruto from Naruto Shippuden, saying it's a completely different story and no. should be judged as such. No, 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 that's not true. No, you, you cannot completely disconnect Boruto from... Naruto, I mean, especially considering how heavily connected it is to the Naruto franchise. And, you know, I think that might be, like, one of their biggest mistakes. I mean, personally, I feel like it probably would have been better if they just had the story set, like, years into the future. You could say Naruto and Sasuke already died of old age, or uh, let's say they uh, there was this, this threat, this big calamity that was threatening to destroy the Shinobi world, and Naruto and Sasuke worked together to stop it, but it cost them their lives. I feel like that would have been a lot better and the story could have been centered around it like Naruto's descendant like let's say his his grandson or his great-grandson or something instead of just making it a direct sequel because I feel like I think uh, what a lot of people don't get is that after the Naruto story ended a lot of people still kind of wanted to see the character you know they still wanted to see the stories of Naruto and Sasuke and Shikamaru and Kiba and Sakura and all of those characters continue and he not of course I think that a lot of us weren't ready to sort of move on from those characters yet you know we still want to see okay like let's let's actually see their characters these these story their stories continue if they're still going to be around as opposed to just leaving them in the background and focusing on these completely new characters whom we don't know uh, we don't really have any connection to them whatsoever other than being the children of the characters that we do like. And a lot of them feel like just ba basic carbon copies of characters that already came before. I mean, hell, Shikidai is basically just sh a younger Shikamaru. Again, it's, it's, there's literally no difference. I mean, hell, he even becomes a Chunin like his, like his dad. Again, just a copy of what already came before. And I think that's what... I think that's also a criticism that I do have with the Wars of Series that a lot of it just feels like a copy of what already came before, except it's happening with characters that we don't really care about and they just expect you to like it, just like we did with the uh, with the Naruto series. And that's just, I'm sorry, but you can't do that. And weirdly enough, it's the same thing as what's happening with Dragon Ball Super. I mean, hell, look at the latest chapter. Again, as of the recording of this video, I think it was chapter 76, where you had a lot of people praising what went on with Vegeta. Meanwhile, I'm looking at the chapter and thinking, this is the exact same thing that happened in the Boo arc. And I'm, and I'll, I'm, I'm thinking, what, what, did people already forget that this already happened? Or are the people who are praising it, did they never read the Dragon Ball manga? Did they never watch the, the Z anime? Like we, we already went through this with Vegeta once and yet we're just rehashing old things, but people are just loving it. I just, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. And these are the same people who are saying that Boruto is different, Boruto is its own thing, and yet it's all, and yet the, the, the thing that they're praising as being its own thing is basically just a rehash of what already came before. Like, this is what I don't get. 
This is disingenuous, and in fact, you can't understand Boruto's story nearly as fluidly or appreciate it as much without knowing about <coughs> Naruto Excuse Part me. 1 and 2. Even on the very backs of the official volume releases by Viz, these stories are advertised as The Legend of mm -hmm. Naruto yeah, Continues. And there's some credence, though, and that is that Boruto is Boruto's story mm -hmm. for 95% of it. But to say it is completely unlinked from Naruto is total BS, and I'll explain why it being linked to Naruto is actually to its benefit, in which I feel as though Boruto fans try to delink them out of fear of comparison. The other thing I want to preface is that while Boruto is in fact about Boruto, and Boruto is the main character, and it's about him, the first mm. arc is not about Boruto. They are even stated by Boruto himself to be... I mean, the thing that, again, he, uh, again, this is, I think this falls into the uh, the criticism of Boruto being the main character, and you know what, he's right, this is his story, this is the, he is the main character, and it's not out of, it's, it's not weird for the, um, it's not weird for, uh, for the story to focus on him, in fact, you kind of expect it, just like how Dragon Ball focuses on Goku, because he is the main character, even though there are other characters that we do like and we do kind of wish the story would maybe put some focus on them, but that's neither here nor there. You can't really fault a series for focusing on its main character. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. That's normal. I think the problem that a lot of people have is that, and I think this is mainly an issue with the writing, is that the main character of Borto just isn't really all that interesting. Like, he's, if you think about it, there's, his character is honestly kind of, boring like i said it's just like what what is it that what is it that what is it about his character that gets people to be interested in him like there's there's nothing really i, I mean okay so he uh he kind of resents his dad because he isn't home as much as he wants to and okay yeah i i get it but at the same time it's like you you understand why uh, you get why Naruto like he's he's busy because he's the Hokage. He has to, he has an entire village to run, and again I I, I get where Boruto's coming from. I do, but I think the biggest problem is that, uh, and and again this is more so on the writers. I think this is more so on Kodachi who was still in charge of the story at the time. I think this is I think it he didn't really do himself any favor when it, any favors when it comes to writing Boruto because. If he had written Borto to maybe be a little bit more understanding of Naruto's position, and while I, I again I get it, he's a kid, but at the same time it's like, you know, he has Hinata there, who you would think would at least try to help Borto understand, you know, Naruto's position as you know the Hokage, and he has to not only put his family, but <clears throat> excuse me, he has to put all of the villagers first to you know the, the, all of them are are his are his priority and the actual village and you know i i you can still have bored to be upset that you know he um he doesn't get to spend as much time with his dad again but if he had just maybe written him to be a little bit more understanding still upset but understanding of naruto's position then i think it would have endeared people to borto more as opposed to how he was written originally to where he's just acting like a complete brat who just whines and complains and sulks about just everything when it comes to Naruto and it just it, it got to the point of being annoying especially when this series is trying to you know mostly adhere to because look if you think this series isn't trying to adhere to the original fans you you are a fucking moron okay because that's who they are trying to get and all of us all of us who grew up with this series, of course, grew up with this character, and now all of a sudden here comes this kid who just talks shit about him. It's like, dude, of course people are not going to like him. It's like, what did he think was going to happen? And back to the point that I originally made about Borto just not really being all that interesting. It's just, again, I, I will admit that he is better now than he was before. But again, this... I, I just feel like the way he was written at the beginning kind of turned a lot of people off, and it's why a lot of people just are not it, are not fans of the series. Because look, sometimes a series is carried by its main character, and when your main character starts off as just this whiny, annoying brat, it does it, you're not really doing yourself any favors, and you can't blame people for basically leaving for just like the for the second they turn, the second they open the page. So like the first volume and the first thing they see is this whiny brat who just whines and complains about oh my god 
you know why why isn't all why isn't my my dad just spending more time with me and then at first you think okay that's horrible but then when you find out what his dad actually does you start to think oh, wow this guy is fucking complaining about nothing jesus and borto is the main character and it's about him wait, 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 wait. and nar analyzing the manga recording <clears throat> this video but i'll add some insights from the anime continuity that i appreciate or think can be hurtful to the borto franchise Okay, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to pause again. Uh, I'll, I'll try to not pause as much, sorry, but I, I just want to give my thoughts. So, okay, I just want to talk about this for a second. So, you know how some people will defend the series by saying, well, if you think that there are these, uh, you know, gaps in the story or some things that just aren't explained or some things are just glossed over and it kind of hurts the story and someone will say, well, dude, you, you got to go watch the anime. The anime covers this. Here's my question though. Why should I have to watch the anime? It's like, why can't I just pick up the manga? Why can't I or anyone else just pick up the manga and just get the whole story? Do you see what I mean? It's like, the, the fact that your series needs supplementary material to fill in the gaps of certain stories, that just goes to show you that your series isn't really all that good to begin with. Do you see what I mean? It's like, okay, uh, here, here's, a, here's a good example. Remember in the uh, Future Trunks arc of the Dragon Ball Super anime? Remember when it first aired on TV? And there were a lot of people who, one of their biggest complaints that there were so many things about the series that, that weren't explained. Like, for example, Super Saiyan Rose wasn't explained. We have no idea what this is. We were left to just guess as to what it is. As if, you know, um, we, we were left to guess as to what the form actually is what it means but then the manga came along and it actually gave us an explanation as to what it actually is and someone will say well dude if you're missing this with the anime i'll just go read the manga the manga gives a good explanation but again it's like why should i have to read the manga to get an explanation for it? why wasn't that explanation in the anime it's like do you see what i mean it's like look whenever you're story needs supplementary material to properly explain it then your story was never really all that well told in the first place it's the same argument that some people will use with the prequels it's like one of the complaints that the prequels has is that it wants you to be upset how at the end of revenge of the sith you saw this relationship between anakin and obi-wan completely just fall apart but the thing is is that you never really got that just by watching the movies and some people will say well all you got to do is watch the clone wars or read some of the EU books. But the thing is, why do I need to either watch a TV show or read some books in order to understand what happens in the movies? Like that just says that your movies aren't really well told in the first place. Your trilogy didn't wasn't told well to the point where someone could just watch it and get the whole story. Do you see what I mean? I think it's the same thing with Naruto to where some people will say, well, you got to watch the anime. The anime covers this. But again, why do I need to watch the anime? I should just read the manga and get the whole story. <clears throat> All right, let's that continue. maybe the manga can adapt to its benefit. Sorry, I'll just let the video play out for a little bit without pausing. This video is not a critique or a wanking off of Borto. I genuinely just want to explore what the series is, the good and the bad, and how to make it even better so it stops getting a bad rap in the future. Borto starts the series as talented, the opposite of Naruto for the most part. But due to his talent, he is rather lazy and doesn't really work hard for anything. The shadow clone and elemental jutsus he has are actually at a level that he pretty much picked up on instantly. Some people would say this is bad, however it's not a bad quality as he can't use them nearly as well as Naruto at the beginning of the series who attained them with hard work. Being Well, the thing is, is that the, the difference between Boruto and Naruto is that, you know, yeah, when it comes to Shadow Clones, that's true, he can't use them as well as, um, as Naruto could. But when it comes to elemental style ninjutsu, it's like, it's even explained in the series that this is something that only high level jonin are expected to be able to do and it's like okay well naruto even though keep in mind naruto was revealed later on to be like this child of prophecy and the reincarnation of ashura and yet even with that heritage he still had to work hard to be able to get to where he is and yet boruto you know a lot, a lot of the excuses that <laughs> sorry i said i wasn't gonna pause but a lot of the excuses that people use when it comes to boruto is that 
well, you know, he's a talent. He has these genetics that allow him to uh, basically be able to uh, do all of these amazing things. And it's like, well, so did Naruto. Naruto was born like a member of the Uzumaki clan, which gives him this, uh, you know, higher than average chakra pool and an insane amount of stamina. And not to mention, again, he's the reincarnation of the son of the uh, the Sage of Six Paths, who was considered like the strongest shinobi possibly ever, you know, up until the up until we get to the, the, the Boruto era. Although, again, keep in mind, we still have no idea exactly how powerful Hagoroma is at the moment. It's just it's kind of left ambiguous. And it's like he and and he just is able to pick up on all these things instantly. It's like he, from such a young age, he he is able to perform shadow clones. He has three changes in chakra nature, which is insane. And it's like people use the excuse of oh well he has good genes, but yes, yeah, so did Naruto. And again, he still had to work hard. Hell, even Sasuke, who had the shot and gun. Who could, which could allow him to copy other jutsu, including jutsus of that that are based on in elemental natures that aren't unique to him. It still allows him to use them. Even he still had to work to train to be able to properly utilize them. And yet Boruto just could just do it instantly. So this whole excuse of well, Boruto has good genetics it just just never sat well with me. And the thing that doesn't really make a lot of sense is that you show him having an easier time. Like, you show that he's this prodigy who can just instantly do this, and yet you're telling me that he has trouble doing certain things. Like, that to, to, that just doesn't make sense. And to me, it just feels like they're trying to walk back on some of the things that they've already established on with, with, with Boruto, which honestly would kind of be par for the course, because Kishimoto kind of did that a lot with certain characters to where... I've talked about this before, how Kishimoto has a tendency to um, sort of give their uh, their their give his characters like certain abilities but then realize that okay this is a little overpowered i need to kind of walk it back by either creating like a weakness or give a reason as to why they can't use it as much like for example uh, look at the amaterasu which technically should be a one hit kill technique you could say the reason why sasuke didn't use it as much as first because it's a mangekyo sharingan ability and the more he uses the mangekyo sharingan the more he starts to lose his eyesight Although that was kind of mitigated by the EMS, and then he had introduced characters who could just negate the Amaterasu, because otherwise he would just be able to look at them and then boom, you're dead. So it's just, I guess you could say that's kind of par for the course, but yeah, uh, I just, uh, to me, the whole excuse of, um, uh, you know, him can't using, using it as well as Naruto doesn't really fly well with me because there are some things he does that's even that even Naruto couldn't do when he was young and the whole thing of him having an easier time with certain things but having to work hard with other things just didn't really make all that didn't really make all, a lot of uh, sense to me and before someone says uh you know well what about the Rasengan he worked hard to match the Rasengan well yeah but he when it comes to the Rasengan he did it uh he 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 was able to do it in a week meanwhile it took Naruto like what what did it, it took him like a month to be able to learn it and even then, he had to basically come up with his own unique way of being able to actually learn to use the uh, the Rasengan. You know, he wasn't able to do it the way that other people did it. And I think that's what made Naruto really interesting is that he basically found his own way, his own unique way of being able to do things as opposed to just doing it the way other people did because he realized he couldn't. I think that's one thing that made a lot of people invested in Naruto because I think a lot of people could relate to that. Meanwhile, you have Boruto, who, like I said, is basically just... Hell, when it comes to the whole Rasengan thing, it was literally copy and paste when it comes to Naruto, how, of how Naruto learned it. Except... They had to completely ruin it by... And you know, that whole Rasengan thing, I'm not going to lie, did kind of endear me to, to, to Boruto because I thought that it would have maybe uh, lent him to, you know, not, uh, not, not being this overly prodigious character who doesn't have to work hard for anything, but then they had to completely ruin it by saying that he was able to do this thing that on accident, which hell, even Naruto couldn't do until, like, he was well into his adulthood able to spawn 1,000 clones in the very first chapter and being able to spawn multiple dozens of them easily in fights while Boruto can only use a few at most. He's also introduced to ninja tools that basically allow almost anybody to use any jutsu loaded into them and that you don't have to be a ninja to use one. 
This is a very important detail. We then go to Naruto saying that for peace to be maintained, that the proper lessons need to be ingrained in the next generations to prevent things from going crazy. From the get-go, Boruto's almost inclined to cheat. Why wouldn't he simply want to use a ninja tool that could grant him whatever power he wanted? He was already lazy and didn't have anything to prove for himself. Naruto also lecturing about passing out lessons to the next generation is also extremely ironic because he never attempts to do this with Boruto. One thing you'll notice about the first arc of Boruto is that Naruto is so blinded by his accomplishments in his dreams that he doesn't even see that he's a father most of the time and is being hypocritical. Without any training, I managed to shuffle shadow doppelgangers right off the bat. Boruto is bratty for attention at first, which is a turnoff for many people reading, but is also a realistic outcome. Also, ironically, Boruto is bratty and does things for attention because his father doesn't give him any. Naruto is leaving his son feeling almost as lonely as he used to as a kid and doesn't even recognize him. Whenever Boruto enters his office, he demands to be- Oh boy, okay, again, I apologize. <laughs> okay, just, just want to talk about this for a second because man, okay, so <clears throat> this is one thing that honestly did kind of bother me about the- uh, about how Naruto is portrayed in the uh, in the series because the idea that Naruto would be okay with just not being all that present in his his own child's life to me is honestly hard to believe because you would think that Naruto who knows how painful it is to be you know on his own how painful it is not to have that parental figure in your life you think that the idea that he would be willing to do that with someone else is honestly just hard for me to believe. And one of the things that I really don't like about the series, at least at the beginning, you know, that did kind of change, uh, you know, now, which I do appreciate, I'm not going to lie. But the idea of him being okay with just, uh, just, just, the, the idea of, sorry, the idea of him, again, not being there for Boruto is just really, really hard for me to believe. It's just, it, it's hard for me to believe that someone who knows how painful it is to basically be kind of left alone, even though Boruto isn't alone, he still has his mom, he still has his sister, so it's not the same thing. The idea of him basically not being there for his child is just hard for me to believe. And one thing that didn't really endear me to the Boruto series at the beginning, because it felt like they uh, they just wanted a reason to create drama and just came up with a reason out of the blue, even though it's not really in line with Naruto's character. So just wanted to, to just want to say something about Leaving that. Leaving his son feeling almost as lonely as he used to as a kid and doesn't even recognize it. Whenever Which again doesn't really make a lot of sense because it's not the same thing. Naruto was literally alone. He didn't have anyone. He didn't have anyone, but Boruto has a mother, he has a sister, he has a lot of good friends. So this whole idea of Boruto being just as lonely as, as Naruto was is, is complete bullshit. I'm sorry. It's not the same. Boruto enters his office, he demands to be called Okage, and not dad. He even sends a shadow clone to his daughter's birthday party and would rather have the real version of himself do paperwork alone in an office, showing he values being Okage more than being a father to Himiwari and Boruto. This is a pretty interesting detail that is actually potentially a follow-up from part two of Naruto that I'll get into later, but for now, just know he values being Hokage more. Boruto is obviously upset and freaks out on Naruto. Any kid would freak out on their parent if they valued their job more than them. Boruto is then Which again Sasuke, is kind of hard to Sasuke believe. Someone who is acknowledged by Naruto and is extremely powerful, then deals with Boruto and gives Okay, I'm not gonna pause for too long, but I just want to say one thing that I really like about the Naruto about the Boruto manga now is that they did kind of fix Sasuke's hair. I'm not gonna lie, I was not a fan of this. It's like it looks so goddamn weird. And now it looks a little bit more like how Kishimoto originally drew the uh, the character as an adult in chapter 700 and also in, in, in Naruto Gaiden. So just wanted to talk about that. Just some attention not a fan of this. Briefly. Boruto figures that Sasuke is acknowledged by Naruto, so maybe he can help him. It's a childish jump in logic, but it makes sense. Obviously, Boruto yeah. is a child, and Sasuke probably can help Boruto. So Sasuke brings this up to Naruto, and they have a discussion about whether Boruto is like them at all, in which Sasuke thinks he is, and Naruto disagrees. Due to this, Sasuke hopes to teach Boruto guts to prove Naruto wrong. Boruto tries learning the Rasengan and hopes of becoming Sasuke's student, and after hard work not only does he master it, but he masters an advanced version accidentally. When Boruto hears Sasuke calls Rasengan, 
accidentally, he accidentally learns it. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. On small, he gets upset because most things come to him rather quickly, and he hates to fail at anything. He hasn't been disciplined much growing up, and thus wouldn't be disciplined. When he thinks he failed, even though he didn't, he resorts to cheating. The scientific ninja tools from earlier that already aligned with him to begin with are then dangled in front of his face, and he accepts, which Sasuke notes makes Boruto different than Naruto, even though he doesn't want to believe it. Another funny note is that once the ninja tools are presented to Boruto, he noticed he was dirty from training and quickly cleans up, showing he's going back to his roots of not trying hard and looking for an easy way out, as the clean clothes represent him not being like Naruto, as Naruto and Sasuke discussed in the Hokage office. Two new Otsutsuki are introduced, the same clan as Kaguya, that Sasuke had to fight in Kaguya's dimension, who apparently even Kaguya herself was warning of. Osutsuki, from what we know, are almost raw representations of power and disparity. Kaguya was a raw representation of duality and chakra and Naruto that Madara preached against and wanted a way to defeat. Not literally Kaguya, but the dualities that spawn from chakra, power that she represented, etc. So, for two new Otsutsuki, who Kaguya in the original anime said only cared about power to arrive, was kind of interesting, and I didn't really expect anything deep from them. If anything, I expected two people even more ruthless and out of their gourd than Kaguya was. Kaguya being someone who at least spared humanity after her infinite Tsukuyomi was clearly a little different, and she clearly mm -hmm. loved others to some degree. We are to expect that the other Otsutsuki don't even have the- Sorry, you gotta pause, because anime clips and TV Tokyo is pretty brutal when it comes to using anime clips, so. These bare bone qualities, and just as Madara said, that with power comes the desire to use it. Power mm -hmm. almost in itself breeds conflict, and this is that philosophy in its most literal form. So these Otsutsuki come to Earth seeking conflict due to Naruto's power and chakra, not even out of revenge for Kaguya or something, but literally just due to Naruto's power and chakra. I think that was pretty fitting, and I actually liked it a lot. By the way, a lot of Madara's quotes and lessons actually apply to Borto and hmm. his characters, which people don't notice really? a lot. But not only do they stay in line with Madara's warning, but they have something that goes even further, which for what was supposed to be brutish brain dead Dragon Ball alien. I mean, they kind of are, let's be honest. It's coming to box is pretty interesting, and we'll get into that in a bit. We'll also get into aliens and Boruto a, a little bit later. Boruto ends up cheating in the Chunin exams and thinks he can finally fist bump Naruto after winning some fights, in which Naruto says Boruto is not a ninja, which was foreshadowed. Beating people with ninja tools does not make you a ninja, and this was stated all the way back in chapter one. You don't need to be a ninja to use them, Boruto needed to learn what it meant to be a ninja. To Boruto's credit here, he does see something very true in which he calls out Naruto on his hypocrisy. If Naruto had passed these lessons, he had also touted to Boruto, lectured him earlier, and even taught him what it meant to keep the- Okay, um, here's the thing. I, I gotta be honest, I'm not a big fan of this because it's like, again, I, 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 again, I, I get the context before someone in the comments says, oh, you don't get it. First of all, go fuck yourself. I do get it, okay? The story isn't as deep and complex as you like to make it out to be, okay? The story is very simple. It's easy to understand. We get it, okay? However, the thing that I didn't really like about this moment in particular is that, and something that happens later on that's kind of a follow-up to this, is that it seems to place a lot of the blame on, on Naruto because of, for, for this happening, even though... He says, if you'd lectured me earlier, dude, he did. He did try to lecture you earlier. You just wouldn't listen. Remember in the Hokage office when he tried to tell him, but he keeps going, ah, well, listen, I, I just have it so easy and blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, go fuck yourself with this. This made no goddamn sense. He did try to lecture you. You're the one who wouldn't listen. And then the series goes on. To, and then later on, it basically goes on to have Naruto apologize for saying, Oh, you're right, I made a mistake. No, you didn't. You didn't make a mistake. You didn't do anything wrong. Okay, and remember, Boruto's the one who chose to use the, the, the scientific ninja tool. Nobody forced him to do it, even though he knew it was against the rules. Jesus. Peace or any of these things, Boruto would have never cheated. 
and he would have also been a lot stronger. This is actually 100% true, as when Borto finally does learn his lessons from this arc, he absolutely despises and resents ninja tools and what they represent, seeing them as a spit in the face for Shinobi, and he values learning techniques on his own. But he still hasn't developed there yet. Momoshiki then arrives, this embodied in a power I talked about earlier, and he embodies this so much that he doesn't even acknowledge Borto exists because he only sees Naruto when he arrives, similar to how Kaguya strolled by and didn't even glance at Sakura or Kakashi in her introduction. It was almost as if Borto was a wild animal Momoshiki walked by in the woods. He had no value for anything except power and conflict, which Naruto had plenty of, and Borto had none of. Funny enough though, Borto tries to use ninja tools to attack Momoshiki, which makes Momoshiki finally acknowledge his conflict, and he uses Borto's tool to empower his own attack that would eventually bring down and capture Borto's own father. In Naruto's sacrifice, Borto is reminded of Sasuke's words from before, that he needs to remember who Naruto was before, not who he is now, and this is a message for Borto fans, which I'll go into later. Naruto is captured and being drained of his power in another dimension, and now everyone has to save him. Sasuke still has faith in Boruto and believes in his redemption as a shinobi. See, it's starting to get better. Just as Sasuke once was redeemed, and thus takes Boruto. Although the way the five the way the head's drawn is still a little bit weird, I'll be honest. Kage to take down Momoshiki and Kinshiki. During the fight, we see the embodiment of guts and hard work fight against its polar opposite, one that cheats for results and power. The Otsutsuki clan was essentially a clan of power-hungry cheaters. They take pills for results and didn't even know what hard work meant. This was basically the two sides of Borto fighting against each other and a godly physical clash. At the end, hard work pays off, but due to the intervention of another party, Momoshiki gets the upper hand and Borto has to take down Momoshiki with his Rasengan, something he acquired with hard work. He then creates a giant Rasengan made by him and Naruto together, and while holding it- Well, let's be honest, it was it was Naruto the most, because Borto did not have that much chakra, let's be honest. He sees Naruto's emotions and struggle, he can feel the insane amount of guts and effort it took to create a Rasengan that powerful. And after acknowledging this, Borto wields this hard work in his hands and literally vaporizes the concept of cheating, etc. away. Naruto acknowledges Borto and he is allowed to be a ninja again. He was redeemed. For those that don't really what? get it yet, Borto and Naruto's lessons is almost like the fan bases themselves when they see the series. Naruto fans are disinterested in Borto and care more about Naruto being Hokage, while Borto fans that started out with the series don't really understand why they should even care about Naruto's accomplishments or why everyone likes him so much. While Naruto, or the Naruto fan base, eventually learned that Borto was in fact like Naruto and Sasuke and was worthy of being a ninja, and Borto, the Borto fan base, could see into how great Naruto really was and saw him for what he was in the past. I don't know if that was intentionally crafted by Kishimoto when he originally helped write the Borto movie, or if it was just amplified more in the manga version, but all of that in just 10 chapters, I don't see the issue, and I honestly think that if you can't like that, you just didn't really like the Naruto series. Maybe um, you like some more shallow aspects of it. Maybe you just like no, 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 no. We, do. I, I don't, I don't know if I necessarily. So when it comes to whether or not this was planned by uh, uh, Kishimoto, where is it? Where is it? Okay, here we go. When it comes to whether or not this was planned by Kishimoto, I don't, I don't know if this, I don't know if this is necessarily true. I just. Um, Hmm, again, see, here's the thing. I will say that the versus Momoshiki stuff was pretty damn good because that was mostly written by Kishimoto. However, personally, I feel like it's the... Uh, excuse me, sorry. Mm. Uh, it's just <laughs> something wrong. Uh, but personally, I feel like it's the, uh, the later parts of the series where I think a lot of us have a bit of a... where a lot of us start to get some problems when it comes to the uh, the Boruto series, I will say that up until this point, the uh, the versus Momoshiki arc I would say is the best out of all of them. When it comes, and some of them might say, "Well, what about all this stuff with with Kawaki? Here's the thing, or with Kawaki and Kara and Ishiki and Jigen. Here's the thing: the only thing that was good about that uh, about that arc was Kawaki and his relationship with Naruto. I will say that that was really really good. Everything else was crap. Everything else was just awful. Kara is awful. It is a nothing organization. And before someone says, I, again, keep in mind, this series is a manga first. And in the manga, Kara is awful. 
do not tell me I need to go watch the anime because like I said earlier, the fact that I need to go watch something else just to get the full story goes to show you that the story wasn't really all that good to begin with. Okay? Kara, and again, I've said this before and I'll say it again. If it didn't happen in the manga, as far as I'm concerned, it didn't happen. Kara is a nothing organization. Ishiki is a nothing character. Jigen is a nothing character. The only thing that was good about that series was Kawaki and his relationship with Naruto and Kawaki's growth throughout that series to learn to accept people, actually, you know, accept that there are people who actually care about him, who genuinely care about him and aren't just trying to use him for something else. Although, they're, although based on some of the more recent chapters, again, based, this video is being recorded uh, right after the most recent chapter came out. I think it was chapter 62, if I remember correctly. So there is a chance they might go back on that or something might happen that could change that. But yeah, the whole thing about that arc is the only good thing, like I said, was Kawaki and his relationship with Naruto. That's the only thing that was good. Everything else about that is absolute crap. It's garbage. And that goes to show you that the, uh, the, the writers just... Again, it felt like the writing was missing. It felt like a lot of the a lot. It felt like Kodachi, who was the main person who was writing it at the time, it felt like he kind of missed what what it is that a lot of people liked about the uh, the series of Naruto. And it's like what uh, it, it, he Seth did kind of point out in this video that there are a lot of underlying themes when it comes to the series. Now, some of them I don't necessarily agree with, but they are there, and that is one thing that a lot of people did like about Naruto. It's when the everything after, after this that shows up that I think was mainly written by Kodachi that I think a lot of people just started to just not really be all that interesting. And then now Kishimoto comes in and he starts to handle the writing. You can see that a lot of that is starting to come back. Although one thing that I will give Kodachi credit for, like I said, is the relationship between Kawaki and Naruto. That I will give him credit for. It's everything else, like I said, is absolutely, it's absolutely terrible. Ten chapters? I don't see the issue. And I honestly... Right think that it's more shallow aspects of it. maybe just like and the thing that again uh, while i i get that there are underlying themes to me personally my biggest problem is that it just feels a little weak the 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 the, the underlying themes of the other uh, narcissists it just feels a little bit weak like hard work is better than cheating and it's like, didn't, didn't you already do this in the Naruto series? It's like, again, it goes back to the point that I made where it feels like you're just rehashing things of th things that you've already done in the past. And it's like, I, it, again, it's just you're, you're doing the same thing over again and then expecting people to think that it's better than what already came before, which to me just feels a little bit weird. The fighting or something, because that was very Naruto like that first 10 chapters and there was nothing bad about it but maybe mm. that arc is good and the rest is bad after all this is just a rerun of the movie with the rest of Boruto only being supervised by Kishimoto sort of like Toriyama with Dragon Ball with it being written by Kodachi instead maybe but this seems disingenuous as well as the energy from that first arc doesn't really stop there now that Boruto's mm. accepted being a shinobi, we learn of Boruto's goal to be a shinobi like Sasuke. A shinobi that supports the Hokage and is acknowledged in the shadows. And he has developed and done a 180 as a character since chapter 1 when it comes to his outlook as a ninja. The arc after that, he hates ninja tools and eventually has to learn to respect them for their uses again. And eventually has to come to terms with the tool theme that was in the Land of Waves of Naruto Part 1. Where shinobi was again. seen as emotionless tool Rehash. that Naruto wanted to disprove as a child. In a similar case, Borto has to come to terms with tools and how they're used, which he learns that a tool is only as good or bad depending on how you use it. He comes to eventually face the ultimate example of this, which is Ao, or the Mizukage's old right-hand man, who is a shinobi who is turned into a living scientific ninja tool, in which, by employing ninja tactics, hard work and an understanding of the goods of shinobi tools, defeats Ao. And in response, Ao tries to save Borto with ninjutsu, and shows his true nature as a ninja. Everything about the Ao fight is very nice, and even Borto catching Ao off guard with shadow okay. clones is actually foreshadowed and is something he learned to do from Naruto, where Naruto learned how to be tricky with his shadow clones by being a prankster, Borto learned it directly by fighting Naruto himself right before this, which is good. There isn't any Gary Stu energy or anything contrived happening at the moment. The only thing maybe contrived is Borto at all putting up a fight against Ao, however. Yeah. Ao is not using his shinobi attacks or tactics 
and is actively trying to avoid using them, while Porto mainly just catches out by surprise rather than... I, I would still say it's a little bit much because, again, Ao is like this really seasoned, powerful, you know, shinobi, and yet somehow Borto is able to put up a fight against him. I don't know. It just seems a little bit weird. I mean, he referenced the Land of Waves arc, and it's like, in that arc, it's like Naruto and Sasuke, who are, Sasuke especially, who's considered to be like this incredibly talented dude. Remember, he was built up as being the top of the class, really good. And then Zabuza shows up and just completely decimates him and just goes to show you that, yeah, it doesn't matter how good you are as a kid, when you're going up against adults who have been doing this for years, you're going to get your ass kicked. It's like, and you are going to die. Or at least the chances of you dying are very, very high. Now that did, I will admit, kind of fall to the wayside later on and during the rest of the series, and that's one criticism that I have of Naruto. But in the Borto series, it feels like that's just not there. And it just feels a little bit weird to me that they chose to just completely do away with that. And then overpower him like Goku or something. He also defeats him with a Rasengan and a ninja tool, both of which amplifies his powers. No different than Naruto hurting Kabuto, a Kakashi-level opponent with a Rasengan during the Sonic Showdown. So once again, I don't really mm, see the issue. I don't know. It, it, th there again. are some differences. It's like... Naruto had to do something really extreme in order to be able to do that. Remember, he basically let him let his own hand get stabbed. And then, hell, it's something that even Jiraiya criticizes him of later on in the series to where he says, well, so what are you going to do? Are you just going to let someone stab your head every single time in order to be able to land a Rasengan? It's like, you can't do that. you got to learn to be able to land the, uh, the Rasengan on your opponent w without having to do something so extreme. And it's just... Again, it doesn't feel like the same energy is, is there in, in Borto. A Kakashi-level opponent with the Rasengan during the Sonic Showdown. So once again, I don't really see the issue here. If Borto's a Gary Stu here, then Naruto is. No. The next arc is their introduction to Kawaki, who I will honestly say is not only one of the best characters in Borto, but possibly one of the best in all of the Naruto franchise itself, and I'm not... Okay. Again, you've heard me say this. I like Kaoki. I think that he's a really good character. Do I think he's one of the best out of li like literally all of the characters that we've seen since Naruto Chapter 1 all the way till now? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, it's, again, I like Kaoki. Kaoki's good. He's without a doubt, in my opinion, the best character out of the Borto era. I don't know if I would put him up there with characters like Itachi or characters like Gara or Madara or hell, even Orochimaru or Sasuke or uh, Kakashi, or hell, even Naruto or Jiraiya. It's just there's, dude, mm, again, I, I, I want to hear his justification for this. Even exaggerating, he generally is pretty good. I would honestly say that if you haven't given Boruto a chance, just to do it for almost Kawaki alone, which I'll explain very soon. From the get-go, Kawaki is established as very powerful, but this isn't a Gary Stu or New Generation Yucky moment. Kawaki has earned his power, I dare say, just as much, or I dare even say more, than Naruto and Sasuke did in Part 1. That's crazy. Really? No, 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 no. I don't, I don't think so, dude. I don't think so, yeah. Here's the thing. No, I wouldn't call Kawaki a Gary Stu because they do explain that he was trained from a very, very young age to be able to fight. So, no, I, I don't really call that a, a Gary Stu, although... It is a little Gary Seuss that he just so happens to be trained by one of the most powerful characters in the series. It is, you could see it from that perspective, but it, it I, again, I am willing to let it go because he was trained to be able to actually get to the level of power that he is now. But no, I don't think it's like more than, he's earned it more than Naruto and Sasuke. No, I, I don't think so. I gotta disagree with that. Crazy as that sounds, once again, I'm not joking. Kawaki's whole body is reconstructed and is almost all a ninja tool. Kawaki is a kid who was taken from his... So, wait, uh, he, he said that it was earned, but how was it earned that his body was... Like, again, him, his body being turned into a ninja tool and being able to use it as a weapon, That how was that earned? It's not like Kawaki went out and purposefully seeked out Amado and asked him to, you know, modify his body to be able to become what it is now. It's like... It was done to him. Somebody else gave it to him. 
So I, again, I don't. I, again, it's it's kind of like the same argument that people use with with Sasuke when it says that a lot of the things that Sasuke was able to do is because he had the Sharingan, even though that's not necessarily the same. Because first of all, he was born with that ability, and second of all, even with the Sharingan, it's been stated that the Sharingan, yeah, it lets you be able to copy other people's abilities, but you still have to be able to train to be able to properly utilize them. Because remember. During the fight with Rock Lee, Rock Lee basically flat out said to him, it's like, okay, yeah, even if your Sharingan can keep up with my movements and sometimes and be able to predict my movements, it wouldn't matter if your own body cannot keep up with me. You know? And that's why, and it's the same thing with the Chidori. It's like, even if... One second. Okay, back. Sorry about that. So it's like, uh, you know, it's like what he said. Yes, Sasuke was able to learn how to use the Chidori, but it's like in order to properly utilize it, he still had to train. He still had to train his body to be able to properly utilize that technique. And we saw a little bit of that. Uh, and I will give the Boruto anime credit for this, is that we saw a little bit of that with the training with Sasuke and Sarada to where Sarada had to still train to be able to properly utilize the Chidori to build up the necessary speed and the vision when it comes to the uh, the Sharingan. So you see, it's like, it's different. It's not the same thing as Kawaki to where, yes, Kawaki was taught how to fight by Jigen, but it's like the whole him being able, the, uh, the scientific ninja tool was still given to him and it was able he it was it gave him the ability to be able to use it almost instantly now when it comes to the actual fighting techniques that he did earn i will say because of his training with jigen i will say that use of home into the hands of an otsutsuki named ishiki taking the body of a human named jigen once kawaki was sold to ishiki from his father ishiki manipulated his whole body by turning him into a literal tool beat him with training every day and gave him an otsutsuki karma mark that could allow kawaki to utilize otsutsuki like abilities and this isn't gary stewish how i i don't see how this is this isn't gary stewish i mean unless he's joking i i don't such as absorption or etc. This karma mark, however, marks him a target of the Otsutsuki and Kara, and as a vessel of them as well. So, not only did Kawaki have the loneliness of Naruto and Sasuke, which empowered them before, but he does train extremely hard and has possibly the strongest mentor in the whole series, although it's not very constructive mentoring, he is being trained very- Again, I, I, I don't see how this is in Gary Stewart, it's like he was sought out had his body turned into a weapon and then was trained by the again like he said possibly the strongest mentor in the verse and then was also given an ability that allows him to use these godlike it was just given this thing that can allow him to use these godlike techniques and it's like i don't understand how this isn't gary stewish at all it's like c come on immediately if you knew anything about naruto you know that kawaki has also started to parallel him as Naruto was a Jinchuriki that marked him a target of the Akatsuki mm -hmm. and a vessel for Kurama. Funny enough, and once again, don't know if this is intentional, Karma kind of sounds like Kurama. Karma, Kurama, mm -hmm. anyway, using this- <laughs> Yeah, yeah, dude, come on, that, that's a bit of a stretch. Karma, Kawaki is able to defeat one of the Kara goons sent to find him and impresses everyone around him. Naruto eventually meets Kawaki, and as I said earlier, he identifies with Kawaki immediately and wants to take care of him. Naruto is even willing to put the safety of the village aside and before, but sorry, I just, I, I know someone's going to probably bring this up in the comments too. So all of that stuff I talked about when it comes to, uh, when it comes to Kawaki about how he was given this thing that allows him to use these, that makes him incredibly strong. And he has a really strong mentor. And it's something that basically made him a target and made him alone. And someone might say, well, isn't that what happened to Naruto? Yes. But like I said, this is one of the problems with Boruto is that it seems like it's obsessed with just rehashing what was already done before. And it's the same thing with Dragon Ball Super to where they just keep repeating what already happened. And to me, it's like, again, I, I'm sorry, it's hard for me to enjoy the, the, the series. Well, even though, yes, it's you could say it's good and it's, it might be in some places well written, the biggest problem is that you've already done this. 
Like, why are you repeating what you've already done instead of doing something new? Do, do you see what I mean? Like, this is the biggest problem. And by the way, if you think that I'm only criticizing Kawaki and don't criticize that aspect of Naruto, no, 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 I do. Okay, I do. While I, I've always did really like it about how Naruto just so happened to have the most powerful uh, tailed beast put in him, about how he just so happens to... Well, not just so happens to, it does make sense when you read the story about it, but it is kind of convenient that he just so happens to have a mentor who is one of the legendary Sanin, and he also has a dad who, well, technically Minato was, was dead. He also has a dad who just so happens to be this incredibly prodig prodigious shinobi who also could have end up ended up becoming one of the most powerful Hokage ever, although that's still debatable. Same thing with Naruto. I criticize that about Naruto and I criticize that about Kawaki. So I don't want anyone to call me a hypocrite who says that, oh, you are, you're only criticizing Kawaki, but you won't criticize Naruto. No, I do. I do. Okay? So just keep, just remember that. I to protect Kawaki and even Gara and Darui, who was Killer B's teammate, respect and understand Kawaki's struggle and don't want him to be confined like Jinchuriki used to be in Naruto part too. However, Konoha is suspicious of Kawaki, just like it used to be of Naruto when he was a kid, which makes Kawaki feel alienated. Upon his first visit to Naruto's home, he ends up breaking the Himawari's vase, which actually becomes a representation of his character throughout the ensuing arc. Kawaki wants to simply steal Himawari a new vase, but Naruto tells him he should just buy one instead. Morto says he hates that Kawaki thinks he can just replace the vase, and it's a sign of his bad character. It's also interesting because he's mocking Naruto as well. Kawaki then begins to try and fix the vase piece by piece, which is symbolic for him fixing his life piece by piece. Another detail is that Kawaki is rather disrespectful to Naruto until he sees his power. Then, after seeing his power and calming down, he hears Naruto's story and pretty much falls in love with him. We then see how Kawaki obtained karma and many of his PTSD flashbacks and stories in which Jigen would literally place children in bags and kill them with injections and by seizures until they could survive his karma mark for him to establish a vessel. Establishing him as a brutal Otsutsuki and honestly one of the most brutal characters we've ever seen on screen in the whole franchise that didn't really care at all for anything but himself. However, Jigen, also known as Ishiki, is different than any other of the other Utsutsuki until now. He actively works with humans to achieve his goals and even respects them somewhat. He also, despite being insanely powerful, doesn't desire unnecessary conflict like Momoshiki. He is almost godlike in the way he functions. Even in a scene where Delta, a cyborg made by a genius named Amato, spills his dinner everywhere and flips everything over in a freakout, Jigen just returns it back to normal and doesn't get angry or emotional while Delta freaks out about everything, showing he really is almost indifferent to everything around him. But at the end of the day, Ishiki is still an Otsutsuki and follows their will and he is also extremely powerful and eventually will have to use it. Many people then go off on Kawaki for saying he has a foul temper, which is justified. He wasn't raised properly. He was just beaten, abused, manipulated, hugged down on by everyone in his life. But you can see a soft side to him. People haven't shown him respect, so he doesn't really know how to show it to others. Even those stronger than him, like the Kara Inners, he doesn't show respect for, and he often berated them and even insulted Ishiki. This isn't a bad trait, just like Borto being bratty at the beginning of the story. Kawaki is completely justified, and it makes mm. sense he acts this way. It's something for him to work on and develop past. Kawaki begins to work on his manners and how to live a normal life as he slowly rebuilds his vase, and during this rebuilding period, he teaches Borto how to use karma better, and they slowly become friends. They eventually even agree to destroy each other's karma, and Borto even eventually calls Kawaki his brother. Those anger problems with Delta foreshadow her eventually rampaging into the village and she has to fight Naruto, who's willing to protect Kawaki with his life, something not many, if any, others have ever showed him. A lot of people have problems with Delta due to her power level, but I'll get into that later when I talk about power scaling. For now, Naruto risks his life defending Kawaki, and at the end of it all, Kawaki risks his life for Naruto in return, and Delta is eventually defeated. After her defeat, Kawaki can't seem to find the final piece of the vase he was remaking. He couldn't find the last piece of himself to put together or what it was. He often argues against people saying a friendship or family can mean anything, having such a bad time with it growing up, in which even Naruto himself saying it is enough, and Kurama, the fox demon, actually comes out to give Kawaki a lecture on Naruto's life and how much he understands him, and saying that Naruto's lectures on friendship and family are true. 
This brings up a dilemma Kawaki has with himself. Is he a tool for Jigen who promised to fill the empty void in Kawaki's heart, or is he something else? Mm. Without Jigen, was he really whole? And if not, what could fill that hole in his heart instead? Kawaki was a tool literally fashioned from top to bottom to be Ishiki's vessel. He almost wasn't even human anymore and was never treated like one. Could he just go back to being a normal person after what he's been through? And was it even fair to expect that? Jigen eventually faces off against Naruto not once but twice, and by Naruto sacrificing his powers alongside Sasuke, Boruto, and Kawaki, and his newly acquired ninju to obtain from working, they defeat Ishiki for good. Momoshiki also appears and, and rips out Sasuke's Renegon. Anyway, Kawaki comes home. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Okay, let's continue. I'm not going to get into that. This is continue. Is finally fixed. The place in his heart was filled by family and love. It's a pretty cute ending for such a tragic story, but the story continues. This is basically just a basic summary of the story so far. And as I said, I do think... Although the one thing that I, I will say, not this, hold on one second, let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it just real quick. No, not this. No, definitely not this. I just, oh God, where is it? Oh. He also appears hand in... No, not this. Uh, sorry, so I was just looking for something, something I want to it's talk even about. even fair to expect that. Jigen eventually faces off against yeah, Naruto, not once no, but twice, wait, coming and up. by Naruto sacrificing his powers alongside Sasuke, Boruto, and Kawaki, and his newly acquired ninju to obtain from work. See? It gets better. Now he, now he looks more like himself. Even Naruto, even Naruto looks more like he did in the original manga, which I, I will give Ikimoto credit for. He did improve. Working, they defeat Ishiki. Okay, here it is. So, I, I gotta be honest, I'm not a fan of how this ended. It's like Ishiki was built up to be this incredibly powerful, all powerful being who could just just all do almost anything and yet you're telling me the one thing he couldn't do was tell the difference between a shadow clone and the original. It's like and and before someone says this, because I remember hearing someone say this well hearing reading this comment in one of my videos, saying that a shadow clone is supposed to be like an exact copy of the original. Not necessarily. The, the original still stands out. The original still stands out. Okay, and yet you're telling me this is this is a quote unquote god, a quote unquote god of the, uh, uh, you know, of the whole godlike Otsutsuki clan. Apparently, he's supposed to be the strongest out of all of them, and yet you're telling me he couldn't tell that what was standing in front of him was a shadow clone. I don't know. To me, it just it just seems like it's like you you built up this character, and this is just it, it it was just such a lame way to end things. It's like oh, he got tricked by a shadow clone. It's like come on, come on. That that's that's so goddamn lame. You're telling me you couldn't have thought of anything better than this? Right, oh Jesus Christ! Love. It's a pretty cute ending for such a tragic story, but the story continues. This is basically just a basic summary of the story so far. And as I said, I do think Kawaki and even Borto are going to be very deserving characters. Now, the next arc isn't over yet, so we can get on to the next part of this video. What I expect from the future of Borto and Kawaki, and more reasons I love where they're going. My first assumption about okay. them is that Borto is going to be going down the route of Sasuke, and Kawaki is going down the route of Naruto. But this has a lot of attachments to it. For one, we know that Kawaki will probably become an antagonist, or at least it's implied, meaning we are getting the good guy Sasuke and bad guy Naruto route that Naruto told Sasuke was a possible outcome of their friendship during the Five Kage Summit. Not only this, but Borto's goal as Sasuke, quote unquote, might imply that for him to become like Sasuke or the Shadow Kage, you'll have to understand what that means. What it means to protect the village from the shadows. If you've read any Itachi novels or remember any Donzo dialogue, you know that Borto's in for a rude awakening mm -hmm. going down this route. For him to be like Sasuke or maybe even an extension of Itachi, Borto might have to lose everything just as Sasuke once did to really understand him, which is pretty much exactly what's going to happen. I think this is a beautiful direction. Now with Kawaki, him be Here's the thing, if I'm being honest, I, I've always had this kind of a theory of what exactly is happening here, and I don't think it is what they keep telling us it is. I still think that we're being misdirected. So, you know how in the latest chapter we were told about how they're going to plan... Sorry, spoilers for the Borzo manga, how, about how 
they were going to plant the uh, you know the tail about how they're gonna plant the uh, the ten tails and grow the divine tree and grow the chakra fruit and all that stuff I feel like that's probably what's being shown here and the whole fight between Boruto and Kawaki actually has nothing to do with the village I my theory is that they showed up here and the village was already destroyed it was actually done by a third party that we don't know about and when Boruto says that uh, to think you would go this far I get the feeling that again we're being misled that what actually happened is that it was revealed in the latest chapter that the divine tree will absorb the chakra and everyone living here will basically die and unless you're in a different dimension you're you're gonna die along with everyone else and I feel like when he said that Kawaki because we know in this uh, in this uh, flash forward that he has the karma mark so we know he's gonna get it back eventually and having the karma mark does give you access to Otsutsuki abilities like opening portals to other dimensions I get the feeling what ended up happening is Kawaki probably managed to trick Naruto into basically sending him into another dimension to keep him safe and since Naruto doesn't know space-time ninjutsu he isn't able to come back and when it comes to Sasuke well we have honestly no idea I mean we see Boruto with his cloak and his sword and that does imply that maybe something happened to him although again I still feel like we're being misled a lot of people are thinking well maybe Sasuke died I'm still thinking that maybe he didn't and I'm thinking maybe something happened to him to where you know Boruto now has his cloak and his sword and thinks that okay well someone needs to take up his mantle and I said I wanted to be that and that's what Boruto is now again this is just my speculation but we'll have to wait and see we'll have to wait and wait to see what's actually happening but i still think we're being misled here i don't think it's i don't think we're uh, i don't think uh, a lot of us i don't think we're being shown what's actually happening here beautiful direction now with kawaki him becoming an antagonist is fine as an outline with naruto implying he could have easily been the bad guy but there's many reasons why also just to just to Kind of, uh, comment on that earlier I would like to point out that when uh, that when Kawaki and Boruto are fighting on you know um, uh, Naruto stone face I would like to point out I don't know if this was purposefully done like the symbolism but Boruto was on the destroyed part of Naruto's face and Kawaki was fighting on the more visible side of uh, Naruto's face so I can't help but think that maybe there's some symbolism there like maybe uh, again, why I think that maybe we're being misled and we don't actually know what's ha what uh, what's happening here. Yeah. We don't actually know until it actually happens. Although it's possible that that uh, that those plans could have changed. Like maybe Kodachi had something planned, but now that Kishimoto is writing it fully, I I, I can't help but think that maybe that it's it's not going to happen. What we. Uh, what we think is going to happen or what i thought was going to happen isn't actually going to happen and we'll have to wait and see unless that gets completely retconned bad guy but there's many reasons why kawaki would could turn into an antagonist for one we don't know exactly why but we know that kawaki is obsessed with karma more literally he is obsessed with power osutsuki representations of power have dominated his life whether it was the power of his father beating him ishiki controlling him or the power of naruto protecting him power is a huge role in kawaki's life and even naruto kawaki's older almost parallel states that power is all that can defeat the osutsuki not love Karma is also what brought Kawaki all of his new connections that he loves so much. Karma is what made Jigen interested in him. It's what helped him make friends with Boruto. It's what helped him find Naruto. And now that thing is gone and he feels off. It's no surprise that he's going off to looking for a possible way to regain a safer version of it and is constantly dreaming about it. Karma and power is a part of him now. It's how he was raised and is something he'll have to overcome. And as I said earlier, power and naruto invites and breeds conflict it is almost like a part of its being see see i told you like i said he's fighting on the visible face of naruto's face and he's fighting on the destroyed part i can't help but feel like maybe there's something there kawaki is destined for conflict and i think it's perfect after all as madara would say hatred is born trying to protect love i also think there will be a good future for naruto and putting his okage duties above his son it seems to be something very foreshadowed now and i asked people to go back and see if boruto was ever allowed to call naruto dad in the hokage office after the momoshiki fight in the manga and nobody seems to say he does except in the anime which is different continuity 
Naruto also says that if Boruto becomes an Ishiki level threat, he'll deal with him like a Hokage, which is very similar to something that Naruto's previous incarnation, Hashirama, said to Madara back in their fight to the death. So I think this will be a good direction as well. What I want from the future and some problems I have with the series right now that could be fixed. Now, I think Borto is actually pretty well done so far. Like I said, I think Kawaki is one of the best characters in the franchise, where there's still some holes in the series that still need to be filled for me. For one, Saruda, Mitsuki, and Konohamaru deserve more. Well, I think Saruda mm -hmm. is coming along nicely, and her fight against Boro is very well done. She needs more development. Unlike the anime, which just rehashed Naruto the seventh Hokage in the Scarlet Spring for developing Saruda, and the numerous canon fillerish episodes to flesh out characters, none of these apply to the manga, which is a different continuity. While Scarlet Spring is canon to the Boruto manga, the manga itself does not show it again like the anime. The manga has pretty much done nothing with her. We learned a few things about her basic desires, and that's about it. The manga doesn't even explain how she completed her Sharingan. We're just mm -hmm. going to expect she did now by training as a side note, or assume she did in the novels. I hate this, and it makes Sarada feel like mm -hmm. nothing but a side character that doesn't deserve any screen exactly. time. Likewise, with Mitsuki, him having a backstory chapter in Naruto Gaiden, the road illuminated by the full moon, means jack all for the Boruto manga. In the Boruto manga, it's even worse because him being revealed as Orochimaru's son is supposed to be a revelation in it. While I liked his fight versus Boro, in the manga, he needs more. He has Sage Mode, all yeah. of these perfect genes, Which, weirdly you know, enough, we never see him potential. use, like... Use some of it. Why didn't he pull out Sage Mode against Boro? I mean, to me, it's like that's such a useful ability. And while I do, I think it's it was stated that you know Sage Mode kind of like it, it has an incredible toll, uh, like it takes a toll on his body. But still, you would think in that situation where it's a literal life or death situation, you would think that he would have used it. But please, anything. I think Mitsuki has a lot of potential, and while I think his sarcastic and guiding quotes of Boruto are funny, he can have something too. The anime does him a lot better, but the anime isn't for everyone, which I'll get into. Konohamaru deserves more too, he basically comes in and gets knocked out all the time. The best thing we see is Koji acknowledging he's strong before getting knocked out protecting Boruto again, or getting dealt with off screen. Konohamaru busted up a pain when he was younger than Boruto. Have him mm -hmm. show something. He wanted to be the next Hokage and had so much potential. Show it. My next problem is absorption every fight. Even Boruto fans agreed with me when I said this at first when I was almost completely ignorant of the series. Absorption needs to go. Yes, In fact, please. should have went please. way earlier. The absorption was balanced in the original Naruto franchise or series, especially when it was first introduced in the pain arc, because only one path of pain could absorb chakra. Then, with Madara, it got a little absurd. Uh, the point was that Madara was ridiculously overpowered yeah. and nothing could ever stop him. How would you ever, like, feasibly do it? But it didn't really make things exciting. But even then, he still got hit by yes, Jutsu. Yes, exactly. He still got caught off guard and still... And the thing is that Madara, even though he had these overpowered abilities, he never felt like someone who was completely unbeatable. You always felt like they still had some chance to win. The problem with characters like Ijigen or Ishiki is that he always felt like he was this completely unstoppable guy. And to me, it's like, okay, yeah, maybe that's what the series was going for, but it's like that makes them boring, and that's not what people liked about the series. What people liked is that no matter how strong someone was, you never once felt like they were completely unstoppable. You always felt like the the the, uh, the, the protagonist had a chance if the, all they need to do was find it. And to me, it's like... They, they uh, that to me is one of the reasons why Jigen and Ishiki are so boring. It's like they they were made so goddamn strong that even Naruto Sasuke with all their hacks abilities couldn't do anything. It's it's insane to me. Oh God, hit and you you honestly never got that with Madara. You you did it again, which is insane considering how strong Kishimoto made him. Lots of things. Naruto almost chopped him in half with the Rasen Shuriken, etc., etc. And Sasuke but did chop him in half. Once again, they're using the absorption trait. But absorption is so bad because you have an entire series. You have part of Naruto part one and two, 700 chapters of them establishing their new jutsu, their new techniques, their new powers, just for it to be completely nullified and for them to fight like Dragon Ball characters. If I wanted to watch Dragon Ball, I would watch Dragon Ball. I'm here to watch Ninja use Ninjutsu 
and every cool villain I watch does not feel powerful or cooler because they can negate Jutsu by absorbing it. It's not like they're overpowering it. They're just absorbing it. They're just basically skidding around the idea. It's not cool. I've never liked it. And literally every character Naruto fights has to use it. And I, I noticed that Borto's maybe taking some notes from Dragon Ball a little bit. Maybe some people have noticed. But even Dragon Ball dropped the absorption thing almost instantly. Imagine if Perfect Cell came down and could still absorb attacks. He would be way more lay. It wouldn't be cool at all. So please take it out. It is not cool. And it's so weird to take out such an interesting side of your series. It's actually counterintuitive. And I'm pretty sure that's what Toriyama realized immediately writing the Android art. My next problem with the series is the art. Yes, the art is not that good. It gets somewhat better over time. And you can tell when given some time, Ikimoto. So I had to take care of something. Okay, so yeah, I 100% uh, I agree with him. Uh, sorry, I had to mute the mic for a while. But yeah, I agree with him. Jutsu absorption needs to go. And uh, yeah, even Toriyama, like he said, realized that it, it would have made fights incredibly boring if people could just absorb, uh, if antagonists could just absorb abilities. It's like it makes the fights honestly kind of boring. So yes, I do agree that it does need to go. I mean, hell. It, to, to me, what I find kind of funny is that they have antagonists remember that they can absorb Jutsu, and yet, interestingly enough, they never have Sasuke remember that he can do the same thing, and it's like, dude, come on. So, yeah, that's just, that's just bad. It, it, I agree with him. It needs to go, although it seems like it's not going to go anytime soon, because Karma's still there, and Karma could do that, so, Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, when it comes to the artwork, yes, I do agree with him. It's not all that good. Uh, he did mention, and I do agree with him, it has gotten better, but still. When given some time, Ikimoto can draw some cool stuff, but otherwise, he really shows his stuff as mainly a background artist. In the original Naruto, you can actually point out a lot of background art, not by Kishimoto, and his art looks almost identical to it even back then. But it looks like the whole manga is his background art. I can tell for sure why this isn't fun to read for many people, and at least with Dragon Ball Super, which is somewhat like a Borto counterpart for Dragon Ball, mm -hmm. the art genuinely can get really good sometimes in the manga, but with Borto, even at its best, it really almost appears average. It's definitely a bad, and I will not defend it. And it it, it almost feels like it, it, and I've heard someone say this about Dragon Ball Super, and I, I to an extent I do agree, but it doesn't feel like a continuation of dragon ball it feels like someone's fan version of their own fan fiction uh, do, 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 you, do you know what i mean it's like it feels like someone wanted to make a fan fiction sequel of of, of naruto and what they think would happen and that's what the borto art feels like hell even the story feels like that at some time and not only is it bad but now you have series like bleach returning and getting their own boruto era or bleach z and it's drawn by the original guy yeah. almost better than ever. So Borto really is not eating in that department. My next problem is Sarada's betrayal. How Sarada's betrayed and designed in the manga is disgusting. And even Kishimoto yeah, like, doesn't dude, like it. Please what, just stick to Kishimoto. What the hell is this? Why is she wearing these stiletto heels? And dude, the outfit just says, it speaks for itself. Just no. The, the anime, thankfully, isn't doesn't have this design i i still don't understand why she looks like she this the design of her and stop this weird high heel glasses sucking sh my next issue where is kakashi is he dead what kind of crazy vacation is he on he didn't even check up on the gang when ishiki basically yeah. murder stomped naruto and naruto lost karama where is this dude in the manga he's in the anime but surely a smart guy like kakashi should be resourceful i can only assume that they want to keep the other hokage out of the picture to emphasize what what I don't understand is like you saw and I saw this in the the anime recently because that we saw Kakashi and Tsunade when Ishiki invaded the uh, the Leaf Village and yet they never fought him. It's like what what the hell were you guys doing? It's like I I get that you know I I get that you know he's a Naruto and Sasuke level character and only characters like Naruto as in only characters like Naruto and Sasuke could even put a fight. But still the fact that you did nothing it's like come on even Hiruzen. 
who wasn't even Hokage at the time, still helped out with the Nine Tails, even though Minato was the Hokage at the time. It's like it just feels a little bit weird to me that he chose that they he's he's not there, Tsunade's not there, they don't do anything. It's just come on. Besides what Hokage means to Borto and Kawaki more, which if so, that's fine, but it's kind of contrived to just assume that they never get involved really after all these crazy mm -hmm. things, not realistic or believable at all. The anime makes a lot more sense. This is kind of a non-criticism, but why doesn't Naruto wear his headband? Like I said, this is weird, and I don't think it's that serious, but mm -hmm. Naruto not wearing a headband after the huge significance it had in the original Naruto series is a bit jarring with the yeah, Uruka I mean, and how Minato, he demanded Sasuke wear his to respect him being an eagle. Even Minato and Hashirama and Tobirama, they were all wearing their headbands, and yet Naruto's the only one that doesn't? Well, Tsunade also didn't, although... So yeah, I, I guess there's that, but it just feels a little bit weird to me. Normally you just say he's Hokage so he doesn't wear it, but Naruto and Tsunade are the only Hokage who don't wear their headband. And even with I mean with Tsunade I can kind of understand because you know it would maybe she does maybe Kishimoto just didn't want to cover up the Edibiakugo uh, seal. I, I get again I'm just guessing. Tsunade, she could have just thrown hers away before she became Hokage. So mm -hmm. I don't understand why Naruto doesn't wear it. Even Kakashi wore his and it's a part of Naruto's monument design. Hell, it seems like Sasuke cares about it more than Naruto now. So here's some things I think are misconceptions. <laughs> Which is honestly feel... kind of weird because for a long time, Sasuke never gave a shit about that headband. And yet, now he cares about his more than Naruto. And Naruto doesn't even have it on him. It's like, come on, dude. I feel like Naruto and Sasuke are nerfed or getting disrespected. Yes and no. Well, at first, I can see how you could think this. Reading more into it, it's not that bad. Remember, this is a continuation of Naruto Part 2. Which as I hinted earlier, is a benefit to Boruto fans. We kind of already know what Naruto and Sasuke can do, and we don't need them showing it all the time. But Naruto showing Boruto what he can do against Momoshiki was really enough. Him doing it against Delta and Ishiki is even just more overkill. The whole nerf not, thing is not, by the way they feel fighting. With that. However, not only is Momoshiki one of Kagi's clan members she was specifically scared of, Naruto and Sasuke beat him while not even at full power, as both were fatigued when facing him. Mm -hmm. In the manga, Naruto and Sasuke pretty much beat him down until he unleashes a weird jutsu on Sasuke, and then they fuse and essentially one-shot him. Nothing to imply Naruto and Sasuke are nerfed whatsoever here. In the next fight with Delta, Naruto somewhat struggles with her while going all out, and it's implied he's a lot stronger than her, and she can only get the upper hand on Naruto threatening Himiwari, not with power. Even then, Delta is a cyborg made by Amato, who is a part of an Otsutsuki power group. Amato has constructed cyborgs in the newest arc that are even stronger than Jigen in the past. It's no different than Dr. Jiro creates cyborgs to take down Saiyans and Dragon Balls that can blow up planets. In that sense, once again, it's not a nerf. It's just some OP Dragon Ball-esque android girl, yeah, I mean, and I... Naruto still wins. Ishiki beating down Naruto and Sasuke. For one, Ishiki is directly stated to be Kaguya's superior. He can be as strong as he wants, narratively. So was so was Momoshiki, and that didn't stop Naruto and Sasuke from taking him down. It's, so he's pretty much confirmed to be stronger than her, at least before she ate from the divine tree. But even then, Ishiki seems very confident in his ability in almost nothing of Kaguya, despite having a record of her after she ate from the divine tree. He could simply be stronger than her, which is why he took down Naruto and Sasuke so easily. Even Momoshiki, who thought very little of Kaguya. But I, I don't understand how him being stronger than Kaguya could explain why he was able to take down Naruto and Sasuke. It's like, again, so is Momoshiki, and yet Naruto and Sasuke took him down. So I, I don't understand that argument. Yeah, thought Naruto and Sasuke could never beat Ishiki, despite them beating him with fusion. Even in the Otsutsuki dimension that holds their tentails, Ishiki is placed above all of the Otsutsuki. He's just a notoriously very overpowered Otsutsuki. Once again, nothing to scream nerf over. And also, Naruto sacrificing his powers to defeat someone, it wouldn't make sense if it was someone that was a jobber. Naruto sacrificing his powers to face the strongest guy they've ever seen makes a lot more sense. I will admit, though, that it does look like Sasuke gets the short end of the stick in a lot of these fights. Mm -hmm. But it does make sense, especially in the Ishiki fight. Naruto has a much better time fighting opponents stronger than himself than Sasuke due to his regeneration abilities. He can take a hard hit and regenerate. Sasuke just can't really do that. So while I don't like it, it makes sense. Although Sasuke getting caught by Momoshiki's dragon jutsu was kind of overkill. Should have just had Sasuke chop away the technique with his Susano rather than Naruto help him. However, I do mm -hmm. have some gripes with the portrayal of power with the story, and I'd wish they would show more effects of their godlike clashes. I don't like how Three Tails Naruto fighting Orochimaru destroys forests and launches high level mm -hmm. Shinobi away just from their presence, then Naruto with his god amps and full Nine Tails 
fights an Osutsuki level cyborg, and creates only a fart cloud from their clashes. If you want to point out examples of Naruto Shippuden doing this as well after the Rochimaru fight, go ahead. And I'll simply say I don't like it either. Yeah. I'm not asking for planet busting explosions every fight, but Naruto only fights really three times. Have his fights look more intense than the others. Show a clear difference in the scale. Anything. There's so many ways to go about it. And since there are characters even stronger than them appearing in the future, please find a way to make their fights scale higher as well and intense. If two really overpowered characters fight, show it. Period. For Naruto fighting Delta, I can at least attest that Naruto wanted to at least be on the smallest scale as possible because he wanted to protect the children in the background. But with the Ishiki and Momoshiki fights, I really see very little excuse. For instance, when Momoshiki first attacks, Naruto is not allowed to attack it back due to the scale of the explosion that will detonate in the village. Then, when we see Naruto and Sasuke fight Momoshiki in an alternate dimension, where they can go really all out, except maybe use ninjutsu that Momoshiki can't absorb, there's almost nothing in terms of scale. Naruto vs. Orochimaru did it better, once again. Versus Ishiki, they go all out in an alternate dimension, again, but once again, no scale. And they can even somewhat use Jutsu here. Disappointing. They're using the Nine Tails cloak, the Nine Tails in Legend leveling mountains just by swinging his tails on accident, and Sasuke using the Susano who Madara cut mountains away with on accident, yet once again here they are doing almost nothing while having these fights and god ant. It just looks and feels unoppressive. It just feels like a they are fighting now. I will admit that even Toriyama struggled with increasing mm -hmm. scale in his yeah. series. But there's many ways to go about it. And you could say Naruto and Sasuke are just good at, you know, hiding Which is, I think, scale one of the whatever. problems of the recent Boruto era with the insane power cliffing. It's like, it gets harder and harder to believe that these guys would fight and not accidentally destroy a planet. You know, so... Mm. Alternate dimensions and it doesn't matter just feels a little unrealistic and disappointing. Especially for Naruto's final battle. I'll even say this. Boruto's fights throughout the whole series are almost all better than Naruto's fights. His fight versus Ao, his fight versus Boro, etc. Naruto looks like bad Dragon Ball fights, which is due to a nether writing issue. <coughs> Absorption. The grit of Naruto versus the grit of Boruto. I feel as though many people are turned off by Boruto due to the anime. The anime makes Boruto to be a very colorful and childish slice of life adventure that is very different than the original Naruto. Now this is actually a good thing and good writing in all honesty as Boruto is enjoying the peace that Naruto created and doesn't have to be a child soldier. However, the manga is not at all childish or colorful like the anime. Actually, not at all. It gets pretty dark before chapter 20 and just continuously gets darker and more like OG Naruto. Like I said before, give the series a chance, especially for Kawaki, and you'll see the same flavor Naruto used to have. Well, except for the art. I mean, literally. Ishiki is shown putting children in bags and just having them explode. Like. It's, it's not that childish. <laughs> the final thing is aliens in Boruto. People have a problem with aliens in Boruto. It's a show about ninja. I don't want to hear it. I, I don't want to hear it. Mm. I really don't. Like, Naruto's power is derived from a mountain-sized fox demon that can shoot Dragon Ball, like, key attacks. Whoa. I don't want to hear it. There There is no... There's nothing, like, ninja-y about it. it it's honestly... It's more like a wizard show where they act like ninja. <laughs> like, if I'm going to be honest. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any critiques on board. I mean, still. So, are you have anything good to say, let me know. All right, I think that's the video. All right, I'm, I'm going to end it right here, guys. So, that's the video. Sorry if the video is a little bit long. I didn't mean to pause it as much, but... So, yeah, uh, if you... I'm just going to end it right here. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. All the YouTube things. I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.